There has been some big changes in the FODMAP space over the last couple of weeks. Today I am talking to Evelyn Close. She is a registered dietitian and works with the Monash University FODMAP team. Evelyn is going to have a quick chat to us today about the FODMAP reintroduction phase and how new testing data has changed the type of foods that I'm recommending we challenge with. Hello Evelyn, thank you so much for joining us. Hi Alana, thanks so much for having me today. Oh, you're welcome. I am glad there is someone with a wealth of FODMAP knowledge to talk us through these changes. They, they have caused some confusion and a little bit of concern from people who have already finished their FODMAP reintroduction. So before we jump into what's changed, I do want to talk about what the FODMAP reintroduction phase is. There are going to be some new people who are just out of the diet listening to this video, and they might not even know what we're talking about. So what is the FODMAP reintroduction phase? Yeah, so the FODMAP reintroduction phase is step two in the FODMAP diet. So if you have found that your IBS symptoms have improved whilst on the first step, the low FODMAP diet, after two to six weeks, it's time to start FODMAP reintroductions. So you need to challenge each FODMAP group individually. So you could start with fructose, for example, uh, include one fructose reintroduction food, such as orange juice, daily for three days. And you're going to keep a record of your symptoms in the diary function of the Monash FODMAP app. And then you're going to work your way through all the different foods and the different FODMAP groups to help you learn what you can and can't tolerate. And this will ultimately lead you to understand what foods you can reintroduce into your diet and increase that variety again. That sounds good. And I guess my other question is, obviously food variety is a really important reason to reintroduce formats, but are there any other reasons we should be aware of? Yeah, so it's generally good for your health to have a good variety of those foods so good for your gut health um, but I think is also really important for that enjoyment factor as well so there may be foods that you love and that you've missed while being on a low FODMAP diet but the reintroduction means that you may be able to work out how much you can tolerate of those foods and you might be able to have a little bit of it or a little bit more than you originally thought and so you can really enjoy those foods again. Absolutely. Personally, I've been on the FODMAP journey and I know that the reintroduction phase helped me figure out exactly how much of each FODMAP group I could enjoy, which meant when I went out to eat, I could then be like, okay, I'm okay with a little bit of onion and garlic in my meal, or I'm fine with a larger serve of lactose because everything else in my day has been okay. And so it really did help me get that sense of freedom back, which um, is a sort of breath of fresh air after that first low FODMAP phase. Okay, so let's move on. The Monash University FODMAP diet app has been updated in the last couple of weeks and the food recommendations for the reintroduction phase have changed. Could you tell us what happened and, and why things are changing? Yeah, so I guess just to clarify, so the process of reintroduction has not changed. It's just that the foods have been updated. And this is because we retested all of the reintroduction foods and found that some of them have a lower FODMAP content than what was found in previous test results, which made them unsuitable for reintroduction. And these changes are natural in food products and they can vary due to a number of agricultural reasons. So when you're saying they're varying because of agricultural reasons, are we talking about factors like the variety of the foods that the farmers are growing, the growing conditions themselves, like how cold the climate is, as well as, I guess, storage factors for these foods. Like how long are we cold storing them before they make it onto our plates? Are those, those the reasons? Yeah, absolutely. And another reason can be as well is selective breeding of crops for desirable mm. characteristics. Um, so if the market's looking for a slightly sweeter version of the fruit, there may be some changes made at the agricultural level for that too. Absolutely. So hopefully that gives you faith if you're listening in that this isn't just like a weird, random situation that's happened. These foods are changing for valid scientific reasons. And we're seeing this sort of happen slowly over time. Okay, we have a slide, I think, on the different FODMAP challenge foods that are now re recommended. So I'm going to pull that up so we can have, have a quick look. So it looks like lactose is pretty similar to what it was before, but I can see some big changes with sorbitol and mannitol. Do you have any comments on those? 
Yeah, so we were actually quite surprised when we went back and retested some of these foods, the ones that were previously in there. And we found that the sorbitol and mannitol amounts weren't present as they were previously. And so that's why we made the decision to change to these new ones that are going to allow you to accurately test your sorbitol and mannitol tolerance. Absolutely. For example, I think um, under sorbitol, we had foods like uh, blackberries and they've been shifted because they now have a lot of excess fructose in them. And then I know button mushrooms used to be uh, a food that was used under mannitol, but they actually have a combo FODMAP in them. So they've got the mannitol plus some fructin. So obviously they're not going to give you a super clear result if you use them just for your mannitol reintroduction. Um, the other thing I've noticed on the slide, Evelyn, is that under fructin grains, I know a lot of people use that particular challenge to go and test their tolerance to bread. However, in the blog article I read about these changes, it did note that bread can contain often a mixture of oligosaccharides depending on where it is made and what country you're in and, and what ingredients were used. So if you've previously tested that fructin grain and used bread and it, it didn't go well, you didn't pass, what would you do next? Would you come back and retest that group again? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a great opportunity to try again and see what happens this time. It's possible that where you had a lot of trouble last time, you might actually travel a bit better this time. Definitely. And this potentially also shows that often we had people tolerating wheat pasta pretty well, but not tolerating their bread. So this update and these reintroduction foods almost reflects that a little bit as well. If you haven't tried bread before, just remember that you can do your own dedicated food challenge on bread at the end of your reintroduction phase just to see how you test how you tolerate the varieties that are available to you locally awesome okay so we've got these foods hanging out on the slide we can see what foods are available to test each group with but where do you go to find out how much you need to be eating on each of those reintroduction days yeah, so it's super easy in the Monash FODMAP app. When you go into the diary function, you can select reintroduction and you can choose which FODMAP group that you want to test. And then it'll give you the food options and the amount to test on each day. So there'll be an amber level and then there'll be two red levels to try as well. And there's a variety of different foods for each FODMAP group for you to try as well. So essentially you're testing your tolerance to a moderate format level, a high format level, and then a very high format level just to see yeah. how you can go. Yes. Okay, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds really good. It also sounds really doable. And when I'm looking at the slide, when you're testing each group, you're not expected to go through and test every single one of these foods to figure out your format levels, right? How many of these foods do you need to try for each format group? Yeah, we would recommend trying at least one. Um, so you have an understanding of whether, for example, GOS or Sorbitol is a particular trigger for you. But it's also important to think about what foods you actually like and don't like. So for example, for Sorbitol, if you really don't like cherries, you don't have to try cherries. <laughs> And there's heaps of data in the Monash University FODMAP app as well um, that shows you what FODMAPs are in each food. So you can always go back through that food guide and find a different food that contains that FODMAP group if, if you're really struggling, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. Now, for our long-term FODMAPers who have maybe done the reintroduction phase in the past, They've seen this new data come out and they're potentially feeling a bit sad or frustrated because they're like, man, I've already tested all these foods. I've, I've spent the time, I've looked at them, and I don't know what to do next with this new information. What's your recommendation to them? Yeah, so if you have previously done the reintroduction step, that's okay. These changes don't mean that that was a waste of time because it allowed you to understand your tolerance of the foods and of the FODMAP groups at that time. However, these updates do actually highlight the importance of retesting your tolerance to foods because it can actually change over time. So just because the reintroduction foods may have changed doesn't mean that you should redo this step, but it could be a really great option if you feel like you want to, or if you want to see whether you can tolerate these foods 
or you want to understand your triggers a little bit more. So it's totally up to you what you want to do, um, but this might open up some more opportunities for different foods that you thought maybe you previously couldn't have. Absolutely. For example, if you've failed multiple FODMAP reintroduction challenges in the past, now is a really good time to go back and revisit and see if there's, a, I guess, new food that's more accurate this time for that FODMAP group. Um, and then my other question for you is, if you see that you tested, say, excess fructose with honey, but you're already eating a huge array of high format foods that contain excess fructose, so maybe you're eating some mango or some boys and berries as well, you don't have to go back and retest that format group, do you? Because you're already eating a wide range of foods and not experiencing symptoms. Yeah, exactly. And that's why it's so important just to go by what you feel and what's right for you. Um, because if that's the case, then no, you don't need to go back and redo it. Absolutely. So really, you're just going back if you want to, to look at FODMAP groups that are potentially still problematic for you and might be influencing those gut symptoms. Because really, our goal here is just to help you eat as many different foods as possible in your long term diet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, Evelyn, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your FODMAP knowledge with us today. Now, I just want to note that we do have some resources for you if you are on the low FODMAP diet, and please make sure you download the Monash University FODMAP diet app. Evelyn's team are incredible. They're releasing updates onto this app once a month or every couple of months with updated foods and newly tested foods. Um, so that is how you stay up to date. And then there's also some fantastic blog articles on the monashfodmap.com website that you can go and check out if you want to learn more about the reintroduction phase. Um, we also have some great resources on a yummy.com. We specialize in the FODMAP diet as well. So Evelyn, thank you again for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this chat session. We've definitely enjoyed getting your knowledge on this topic. And um, hopefully we can have you on this format chat show again sometime soon. Thank you so much, Alana. It's been so lovely to chat. Awesome. To everyone listening in, thank you for joining us. We hope this was useful. If you've got reintroduction questions, then feel free to leave those in the comments and we'll do our best to come back and answer those for you. Have a great day and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye. Bye.